Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna take a trip into the junkyard. No, not that junkyard, this junkyard. So I'd like to introduce to you, Copart. <laughs> So why the heck are we talking about a junkyard company when there's innovation out there with electric vehicles, genomics, cryptocurrency, metaverse? Why are we talking about Copart, a junkyard company? Well, Copart is an interesting company. Copart is a global company which has 40% market share of the online automobile auction market. And it really operates in an oligopoly, more like a duopoly market with against another company called Insurance Auto Auctions. And it is the leading provider of online auctions and remarketing services for totaled automobiles and salvage materials and parts. And it runs an online auction place that has a global reach across the world. And it really just takes in inventory from insurance companies and sells it on behalf of them. And they sell these vehicles primarily to vehicle dismantlers, vehicle repairers, vehicle use dealers, exporters, and to the general public. So I'd, I'd like to start off with this quote from um, Willis Johnson, who is the founder and, and, pr and prior CEO. This is a quote from his book called Junk to Gold, and I'd highly recommend reading it if you're interested in Copart. I read it and got a lot of insights about the management team, including Willis Johnson and the current CEO, Jay Adair, and also about the company. It's a really inspiring story and it's just a biography of the founder of Copart, Willis Johnson. But this quote is from Willis Johnson when he's pitching to an investment banker right before taking Copart public and this is what he had to say. He said, think of us like the local sewer system. We're a utility. Nothing can get rid of us. Nothing. Two of the biggest businesses in the world are car manufacturers and insurance companies. If insurance companies don't write insurance policies on cars, then they're out of business. If manufacturers don't make cars, then they're out of business. They're always going to make cars, and they're always going to insure them. We're the guy in between. As long as we've got the land in the right place to put the cars on, we can't fail. We are like the septic tanks of the sewer system. You can't have the system without us. So that's an interesting little quote and definitely grabs my attention as an investor because we're, you know, I'm looking for durable companies that aren't going to disappear in 10 years and can grow my money over the long term. It's a really high quality management team. First with Willis Johnson, who is the founder, prior CEO, and current chairman of the board. Wilson Johnson ran the company until 2010, in which he was succeeded as CEO by Jay Adair, who is actually his son-in-law. And Jay Adair has currently, as of date, served 30 three years at Copart. They both own significant holdings of Copart shares. Johnson owns about 7% and Adair owns around 4% of the company. They're very focused on share buybacks. They buy back shares opportunistically. Here's a quote from Willis Johnson where it kind of talks about his reputation in business. He says, both my dad and I also built reputations in the business world of always standing by our word and never doing business if a deal felt wrong. We both walked away from opportunities that may have helped our businesses but would have crossed the moral or ethical line. Jay Adair joined Copart when he was 19 years old. And when Copart got really big, Jay Adair felt that the company had lost its like pop and mom vibe in quotes. And he actually went on a world tour to visit every single yard in the United States and interact with the employees and give a speech to the employees and, and talk to them about their culture. I think that's something special in regards to the management team. In relation to Jay Adair's world tour, Willis Johnson said in, in his book, Junk to Gold, he shared the strength of the company's future with employees and talked about how the salvage industry was recession-proof because people would always be wrecking cars. And you can see this recession-proof, and now Jay Adair says that the company is pandemic-proof. And you can see this in the financials of the company, which really what caught my attention to begin with. Gentlemen, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. I'm a fan of the, the management team. I think they're long-term oriented, and I really think they're high quality. And we're going to get more into some of the things that they've done for the company that are extraordinary. 
So how does Copart make money? Well, it sells memberships for people that are using its online auction place called VB3, which is Virtual Bidding Generation 3. It's its online auction place where people can auction and bid for cars and, and salvage vehicles. It's, it's very much like eBay, except it's in virtual and real-time bidding. So the company makes money on a, on a variety of different types of fees, including transaction fees for vehicle remarketing services. These include vehicle vehicle purchasing fees, vehicle listing fees, and vehicle sales fees. The amount of the fee could be based on a percentage of the sales price. So if the sales price goes up, Copart benefits, or it can be a fixed fee or some type of tiered fee. Other fees include bidding fees, vehicle storage fees, transportation fees, or cost of transporting your vehicle to or from a facility or a yard lot that's owned by Copart. In some cases, they purchase vehicles outright and sell them on their own accord. This represents a small proportion of their sales, which is a good thing because if they buy the vehicle outright, that creates like a form of inventory risk. So the majority of their revenue is called service revenue in which they're selling vehicles for other people. They also have a vehicle sales revenues, which is where they buy a vehicle outright and sell it on their own accord. So a little industry analysis is that there's it's an oligopoly market, but it's really just a duopoly and it's really just copart and a company called Insurance Auto Auctions going head-to-head -head in a heavyweight battle. And Copart roughly owns 45% of the market share of the online automobile salvage market. There's a number of factors that I've seen that kind of separate Copart from Insurance Auto Auctions. One is that Copart is more conservatively financed than Insurance Auto Auctions. Insurance Auto Auctions is way more leveraged than Copart, and Copart really has a better company culture than Insurance auto auctions in my opinion as you can see with Jay Adair's uh, world tour where the management team the guys at up the top visited every single employee and shook their hand and and very much a cohesive group. Another main difference between Copart and Insurance Auto Auctions is that Copart actually owns the land while Insurance Auto Auctions leases it which means that every you know it has to pay out rent every single year and that I think that's something that hurts insurance auto auctions um, financials when compared to Copart. And another thing is that Copart is for a, a junkyard company it's very innovative. This is a list of the innovations that it's made over the years and the first one's electronic viewing auction. You know when it moved up north in the United States is really cold and Copart is really the one that started moving people inside and creating electronic viewing auction in which people could auction off salvage materials and cars inside and, and the parts and everything would be shown on a giant screen. So that's EVA and they actually decided to computerize early on in the early 2000s. At that time people were still kind of skeptical of the internet and that was a bold decision from Copart. Virtual Bidding 2 was the an innovation from Jay Adair and Jay Adair basically pushed EB2 which is the online auction and it was a huge change in the industry and he moved auctions which were in person with an auctioneer online all online very early in the game and this was also early 2000s and actually insurance auto auctions never really moved online until 2015 which shows you the innovative gap between the two companies. CAS is a, a uniform inventory system. Copart was expanding like crazy domestically in the United States and it needed a uniform inventory system to track all the orders and this was a huge pain in the butt for the management team to pull this off. ProQuote is another innovation. It's a proprietary machine learning enabled tool that provides insurance carriers with a timely accurate estimate of the value of a damaged vehicle to support the repair and total loss decisions. IntelliSeller is another innovation. It's an automated tool that assists their sellers in making vital auction decisions applying machine learning. And VB3 is the generation three of virtual bidding their virtual bidding online auction place. So Copart 360 is another innovation in regards to the actual 
posting of images of the vehicles and how attractive they were. In the annual report 2021, it says, we pioneered posting vehicle images online for buyers in 2001, and we have been improving the technology to provide top quality photos since then. In July 2020, we enhanced online images and videos by launching Copart 360. C360, our proprietary technology that captures clear 360 degree views of interiors and exteriors of cars, trucks, and vans across U.S. Copart locations. And here's another quote from Willis Johnson, which really shows how they're an innovatively minded company. And it says, our philosophy is always to be on the bleeding edge and to never let those young guys come up behind us and do what they've done to so many industries. We need to hire those kids instead so we can stay ahead of the curve on all the new technology. And the reason why he's like that is because he was one of those young kids and he really pioneered the industry. So now we're really going to talk about the competitive advantages of Copart, which I think is the most important part in analyzing a business is whether it has a competitive advantage or not. And I've kind of identified three competitive advantages in relation to Copart. There's barriers to entry, uh, economies of scale, and network effects. So starting with barriers to entry, the first part of barriers to entry is Copart's scale. And Copart is, has massive scale. It operates in 11 countries. It has two 200 plus locations. It has 150 plus permitted lots in the United States, and it's reaching hundreds of thousands of buyers every single day on its auction market. Another barrier to entry is relationships. So Copart has already established major relationships with insurance carriers, and it really has integrated those insurance companies into its supply network with exclusivity agreements. And these agreements incorporate companies like Allstate and nationwide and if you're a competitor it's very hard to compete when most of the supply is already integrated with one company the third barrier to entry is land copart has 175 permitted yards in close proximity to large population centers and there's a lot of barriers to entry to attaining land if you wanted to compete with copart you need to have permits licenses to create salvage yards to store these vehicles and from the annual report of 2021 this is a little quote about zoning requirements and it says we are also subject to various local zoning requirements with regard to the location of our storage facilities which generally make it more challenging and expensive to identify acquire and develop new facilities these zoning requirements vary from location to location so if it's challenging and expensive to acquire and develop new facilities if you're a new player how are you going to compete with copart who has 200 plus so another barrier to entry is is the their technology platform they have a 20-year investment into their virtual bidding technology and auction services and auction and inventory management systems and the last barrier to entry is just the process complexity. It's very hard to do what Copart does. They have to provide detailed reporting to sellers. They have to deploy a sub hauler network to transport vehicles. And they have over 4,000 providers and 200 vehicles that they own themselves. They have to navigate regulatory and title processing procedures across 50 states and multiple countries. And they also help out with catastrophes. They responded to Hurricane Katrina. They processed tens of thousands of wrecked cars from Hurricane Katrina and, and mobilized more than 400 employees to help with cleanup efforts. So in regards to title processing, this is from the annual report of 2021, and it says the acquisition and sale of vehicles is regulated by various states provincial, and foreign motor vehicle departments, and the steps required to process vehicle titles is a significant cost of our business. At the same time, our know-how in the area of title processing is a competitive advantage. So if you wanted to enter this market, you'd need to have a comparable know-how in title processing that covers multiple states and countries. The second competitive advantage is economies of scale, and basically what economies of scale is, is as the company gets bigger, it starts operating more efficiently. It has large fixed costs and smaller variable costs, and as the volume increases, the fixed costs get spread over multiple units and the company becomes more efficient. And you can really see this with Copart because it's really built an integrated network of Copart yards 
that's really connected by its auction system and its uniform inventory system. Its ever-increasing geographical footprint um, allows for an integrated network for lower transportation costs, and, and this only strengthens Copart's network and access to new markets. Now the last competitive advantage are what is known as network effects. And in this case, it is marketplace network effects. What marketplace network effects are, basically a company can derive a durable competitive advantage just by bringing together sellers and buyers. And as more sellers join, more buyers will join and the product just gets better and better. In regards to Copart, there's pains that are kind of relieved for buyers. And the pains include, you know, greater selection. Buyers can now go to Copart's online auction place and have a global selection of parts and salvage vehicles. It saves them time and cost of travel. Um, Willis Johnson said that back in his day, he would have to travel and, and take a plane ticket just to stay in business. He'd have to look at the inventory in person and something like this didn't exist back then. And really, geography has ceased to be a problem. As new buyers come in, sellers are attracted to the market. As sellers join, there's more inventory, there's more selection, and it really just drives up prices as more buyers are competing for the inventory. And with all those buyers competing over the cars, the natural result is returns increasing for sellers, which only attracts more sellers. So it's it's just a network effect. It's like a wheel turning and it just it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the moat gets wider and wider and wider. This is a quote from Jay Adair from the 2021 annual report, and it says, The global liquidity of our marketplace provides superior economic outcomes for our sellers and drives a virtuous cycle of rising total loss frequency and increased supply of vehicles at auction. We're, we're going to talk about total loss frequency shortly. Now we're getting to the exciting things. So what are growth vectors for Copart? Where can this company go from here? First, the insurance business can increase. How will the insurance business increase? Well, more sellers are being attracted to Copart's markets, which is only going to play into that flywheel effect of network effects for Copart. Another reason is that there's going to be more driving activity. And this is a, a slide from the 2015 investor presentation from Copart, but it shows a steady increase in miles driven over time. And this is most likely due from just population growth and more people driving. The more driving activity can be reduced by higher gas prices and COVID-19 lockdowns potentially. Like right now, we're dealing with high gas prices and that could reduce driving activity. Really the big growth factor, the biggest growth factor for Copart is a higher total loss frequency. So what is total loss frequency? Total loss frequency is the percentage of cars involved in accidents that insurance companies salvage rather than repair. Why would insurance companies salvage more cars in the future than repair. The reason is that vehicles, automobiles, are becoming more complex and more technologically advanced. The repair costs are becoming much much higher. For this reason, newer vehicles are more likely to be deemed a total loss from insurance companies. Since cars are increasingly having sensors and safety measures incorporated into them, when a car gets in an accident and these safety measures are impaired and an insurance company has to repair those safety measures, that insurance company is now liable. They repair the safety measures on that car and then that, that owner gets in an accident they could sue the insurance company. So it's just, there's a whole bit of hassle in that degree as well. They're becoming more and more expensive to fix because of the all the cutting edge technology in them. And although this cutting edge technology may reduce accident frequency in the in the long-term future, right now it's only driving up repair costs and making insurance companies deem a total loss to more expensive cars. And more expensive cars means more profit, more revenue for Copart because Copart ultimately takes a percentage of the sales price. So if it's selling more expensive cars, it's gonna earn better returns. And this is a slide that shows the growth in repair costs and really how there's a consolidation among repair providers. There's less repair shops and the repair costs for these vehicles are increasing. Here's another slide that shows the ongoing increase in vehicle complexity. You can see that parts per repair by model year for the Honda Accord has increased over the past decade. And remember this investor presentation is from 2015 and the microprocessors per vehicle has increased increased fourfold 
So from a Forbes article, it says that Jay Adair, the CEO of Copart, says that today, one out of five cars that are in an accident are deemed a total loss. When when he first started in the 80s, it was one out of 10. He goes on to say that you used to have a TV repairman, but now when a TV breaks, you just throw it away. Cars are going more and more in that direction. That's the best trend we've got for us. Another growth factor is international expansion. This slide really shows the potential that Copart could go to in additional international markets. And what this really does is it just brings more buyers, more sellers into Copart's market, and it just it benefits Copart in the long run. Copart could potentially move more towards selling cars for other sellers, predominantly more than insurance companies. From the 2021 annual report, it says, as our marketplace has steadily grown in its two-sided liquidity, as rising total loss frequency shifts our insurance cars more and more in the direction of drivable whole cars, we have substantially grown the volume of cars we sell on behalf of other types of sellers, including dealers, financial institutions, fleet operators, and cars we buy from the general public. More than 20% of the vehicles we sell originate from non-insurance channels. We earn the right to sell sell these cars by achieving superior auction returns for our sellers, and with every strong auction outcome and each additional consignment we earn, we spin our flywheel a little faster. What are the risks? Well, there's accident avoiding technology and self-driving cars. In this slide, it says that even with 100% penetration, collision avoidance technologies are only expected to reduce accidents by 10% to 15%. In this slide, it shows that the complete penetration of new technologies is likely to be a multiple decade process. So it's going to be a long time until these safety technologies are fully integrated into people's cars and until they fully penetrate the automobile market. And this slide, I think, is honestly is the most important one because I kind of empathize with this one, is that consumer resistance to adoption of accident avoidance mitigates effectiveness of technology. So basically, it's saying that even if there is safety technology on our cars, are people really going to use them? And that's, that's a good question that you should ask yourself. And at the bottom it says, when respondents were asked about which level of vehicle automation they preferred, most frequent preference was for no self-driving, 43.8%, followed by partially self-driving, 40.6%, with completely self-driving being the least preferred. 15.6%. So the other risk is self-driving cars. And with this slide, it says that autonomous cars have not really surpassed human driving abilities. And this is back in 2015. I'm, I'm sure things have changed from now, but it's basically saying that cars can detect someone walking on the sidewalk and jolt to a halt. And that's, it's not really safe. You could get rear-ended. There might be some some truth to that. This slide I think is pretty important. It just basically says that even if self-driving cars do reduce accident frequency, that technology is only going to drive up repair costs for cars, and that only means more loot for Copart. If we move more into the, the nitty-gritty, the financials, um, this is where things really get attractive, and Copart has 40% operating margins, 30% net margins, the 10-year revenue CAGR compound annual growth rate is around 13%, and the 10-year EPS CAGR is around 20%. That means on average every year over the past 10 years, the earnings have been growing at a 20% clip. Here you can really visualize the, the company. You can see that it's very resistant to recessions like 2008 or COVID, you know, pandemic proof, resistant proof, and that's what Adair says. So it's resistant to market cyclicality. It's conservatively financed. It has low debt, especially when you compare it to insurance auto auctions. It has 1.5 billion in cash and it has roughly 1 billion in net income for the past year. So if you're really big on sustainability, um, Copart is definitely an interesting stock. You know, recycling is really in, in its DNA. And by recycling these parts and auctioning salvage vehicles, it, it claims that it prevents a lot of manufacturing of automobiles and parts and helps avoid millions of tons of carbon dioxide being polluted into the air. So yeah, guys, that's the video. Um, let me know what you think about Copart, if there's anything I missed. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions, and um, stay tuned for the next one. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.